Hi guys, so today it would be a little bit of a different kind of video. I think I mentioned already that I also play a lot of board games next to uh, the reading that I'm doing. And I've been meaning to implement this in my channel um, for a while. So today I thought I would talk to you about three board games that I really liked recently. They're particularly suited for somebody who is not playing a lot of board games, but would like to go into that. They're really accessible and really fun board games. And I will not describe them in very high detail in this video. It's just about you getting some idea of what it's about and what the basic mechanisms are. I will link down below some really good YouTube channels all about board games and they have more in-depth reviews of these games and also let's plays if you want to look at one of these games more closely. I hope you have fun watching this and without further ado let's get into the games. The first game I want to mention is a game by German developer Wolfgang Wasch called Quacksalber von Quedlinburg or in English Quax of Quedlinburg. It's a game for two to four people in a middle age setting where you play charlatans who brew potions and try to sell them to gullible customers. The game is a bag building game, which means that throughout the game you will buy more and better ingredients for your potions, which will then be placed in this black bag. As you brew, you draw the ingredients from the bag and place them in your cauldron depending on their value. Better ingredients will allow you to advance faster on the potion making scale and you will get victory points and money to buy even more ingredients. However, your bag of ingredients contains cherry bombs. If you push your luck too far and draw one too many out of your bag, your cauldron explodes and you will have to choose between victory points and money. I find the theme of this game really fun. The bag building mechanism is quite easy to grasp for beginners, but more experienced players can also have a lot of fun optimizing their gameplay with variants, including more advanced potion ingredients. It's a bit strategic, but the luck component of the bag building balances it out quite well. It's so much fun to draw the ingredients out of the bag and pray for the good ones to come out. It can also be quite infuriating to keep drawing cherry bombs and not the super duper great ingredient you bought two rounds ago that was super expensive. Overall, it's a great game for casual players or a great start for people looking to get into board games and looking for a bit of a challenge. The next game I want to discuss is Shadows Amsterdam, developed by Mathieu Aubert. This game is great for bigger groups of up to eight players looking for a quick game of about 30 minutes. In this game, players split into two teams who will play against each other in real time. You slip into the role of secret service agents on a mission in the city of Amsterdam. One player in each team will be the team leader at the headquarters, giving instructions on how to proceed and where to go to find three clues while avoiding the police, which will be just interfering with your investigation. The knack of this game is that the team leaders can only communicate with their team using pictures. The team then has to deduct based on the images given by the team leader and how they would interpret them, on which neighboring tile to move next. The first team who found the three clues and exits the city safely without encountering the police more than two times wins. I am a big fan of these kind of abstract games involving nonverbal communication through images and associations. It's always fascinating how you get to know people through these games how they think, how they tick, and it will be different with each different group you play with. Shadows Amsterdam is really easy to learn, just within five minutes, and the artwork is just gorgeous. If you like playing in bigger groups, if you like abstract games and social deduction games, this might be just for you. The third and last game I want to mention is probably my highlight of the year. Detective, a modern crime board game, is a cooperative investigation game for one to five players and was developed by Ignacy Cevicek. If you've been watching my channel, you might know that I love detective stories and mystery fiction. Well, this game is the perfect blend of cooperative board gaming experience and serious Sherlock Holmes style detective work. In this game, 
The players are investigators working for a fictional American intelligence agency. The game includes five different cases that are all connected within a bigger story arc. Like real life detectives, you have to take notes, make mind maps, and above all, manage the time and the resources available to you wisely. Each case usually comes with a time limit, say you have two days to solve the case, and each action you choose, having samples tested in the lab, going to court for a trial transcript, interview witnesses, costs a specific amount of time and you have to decide as a team which lead is worth following or if you think another lead might send you on a useless goose chase. A really great addition to the gameplay is the agency server, which is a homepage you can log on to, you just need a computer and the internet, where you can look up suspect files, store lab results and do DNA matching analysis. You might learn some information in one case that will seem completely irrelevant at first, but might be crucial in the following case. This game is incredibly immersive. I really did feel like a real investigator. You have to make some tough choices. Is it worth the time investment to exhume this body or should I rather interview the suspect? It gives you such an adrenaline push to invest the last hour at your disposal to do the DNA matching on the database and yes, the DNA matches we have our killer. I played the five cases with my husband in the space of two weeks and we were constantly talking about the cases, trying to tie loose ends and speculating about leads that we chose not to follow. If you like detective stories, crime fiction or thrillers and you don't mind investing two to three hours immersing yourself in a case with a bunch of friends, this game is for you. So that's it guys, that's the three games I wanted to gush about today. I hope you enjoyed this insight into my other hobby next to reading. I want to continue implementing board games in my channel, so please let me know in the comments below if you like this video, are you interested in this at all, are there any board games you're especially interested in, do you want some recommendation videos, let me know everything down there. I would also love to know, do you play any board games at all, what are your favorites, tell me everything. If you like this video, please subscribe. And if you're new, come and say hello to me in the comments. I would really love that. I'll be back in my next video with more bookish content. So until next time, bye.